Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to week 2 lecture 9. In week 2, we are talking about performance characteristics of instruments and data analysis part 1. In our previous lecture, we have talked about generalized mathematical model for instruments. We have seen what will be the form of the equation for 0 order instrument, first order instrument, second order instrument. We started with an ordinary differential equation and by setting n equal to 0, 1 and 2, we obtain the differential equations for 0 order instruments, first order instruments and second order instruments. We also learned little bit of Laplace transformation technique for solutions of ordinary differential equation. By taking the Laplace transformation, you can find out the transfer function of instruments, which basically is y s by x s where y s represents the output of the instrument as Laplace transform quantity divided by x s which is the Laplace transform quantity of input. So, transfer function is y s by x s which is the Laplace transform quantity of output divided by Laplace transformation of input. So, we have also seen what are, the, what are the transfer functions for 0 order instrument, first order instrument and second order instruments. So, in this lecture, we will take examples of 0 order instrument, first order instrument and we will also briefly talk about step response of first order instrument. So, today's topic is example and analysis of zero order instrument, example and analysis of first order instruments and we will also talk about step response of first order instruments. Recall that the generalized mathematical model for an nth order instrument is represented by this nth order ordinary differential equation. So, for 0 order instruments, I retain only this as the model for the 0 order instrument. A displacement measuring potentiometer can be considered as an example of zero order instrument. This is a displacement measuring potentiometer. The resistance wear has a sliding contact and this is excited with a voltage E V. If the resistance is distributed linearly along the length of the wire, we can relate the output with this input as this. So, basically we can write E 0 into L is equal to E B into X i or E 0 equal to X i by L into E B and E B by L is K or the static sensitivity. So, the 0 order displacement measuring potentiometer assumes the model equation as output 
equal to static sensitivity k into x i which is the input this is x i note that this is a sliding contact so it can go up come down accordingly x i will change accordingly output voltage will change and output voltage is E B by L into X i and E B by L is static sensitivity k. Now, look at this equation. This equation does not have any differential term in it, it is a pure algebraic equation. We say zero error instrument show perfect dynamics because there cannot be any time delay or lag because there is no time term involved in it. So, output will immediately follow input. As this equation suggests E B If I give this output, this input sorry, if I give this input immediately the output will be static sensitivity multiplied by this quantity. There will not be any time delay or lag. So, output becomes the static sensitivity which is constant multiplied by the input. So, this instrument can be considered as an ideal instrument because there is no time delay or there is no time lag. Output immediately follows input and output is a constant multiple of input. That constant multiple is the static sensitivity for displacement measuring potentiometer this becomes E B by L where E B is the exciting voltage and L is the length of the wear. Another example of a zero order linear instrument is a wear strain gauge in which the change in the electrical resistance of the wear is proportional to the strain in the wear. Now, let us talk about first order instruments. Like all first order systems, first order instruments are characterized by capacity to store mass or energy and a resistance. So, in all first order systems or all first order instruments, you will be able to identify two terms one is capacitance another is resistance so capacitance represents the instrument's capacity to store mass or energy and there will also be a resistance associated with this flow of mass or flow of energy so these two terms capacity to store mass or energy and resistance will always be present in any first order instrument. Now, what will represent capacity and what will represent resistance will depend on the particular instrument we are talking about, but in all first order instruments there will be these two terms. The first order instruments show a time delay in their response to changes in input. So, first order instruments will have a time constant you have seen in the mathematical model for a first order instrument there was two terms one was k static sensitivity another was time constant tau which has unit of time. So, this time constant is a measure of 
delay in response. This indicates in some sense the speed of response. The time constant tau is a measure of the time delay and the time constant is product of the resistance and the capacitance. As I told you that all first order instruments will have a capacitance and will have a resistance and the time constant of this first order instrument will be the product of these capacitance and resistance. Thermometers, thermocouples, anemometer that measures wind speed are all examples of first order instruments. So, when I talk about thermometer and thermocouples, I consider bare thermometers and bare thermocouples. What it means that sometimes thermometers and thermocouples are put inside a protective cover to protect it from the effect of measuring environment. So, in that case basically the combined system becomes two first order systems connected in series because thermometer itself is a first order systems and then you have a protective cover around it which is like a say sealed tube sealed at one end and inside that tube we have put the thermometer or thermocouple. So, this tube or this protective tube or seal itself works like a first order system because it also has capacity to store say thermal energy in case of thermometer and there will also be a resistance associated with this flow of the energy. So, a bare thermometer or bare thermocouple that means, the thermometer or thermocouple without the protective cover is a first order instrument, but if I consider the thermocouple or the thermometer is put inside a protective tube, then together it becomes two first order systems connected in series. So, the overall response will then be second order in nature. So, now recall this equation representing the generalized model for any nth order instrument. So, for first order instrument I will retain only the first order terms. So, this represents the model for a first order instrument. So, first order linear instrument has an output which can be represented by a first order linear differential equation. So, this a 1 a 0 are the combination of systems parameters and their constant coefficients. So, if we consider input as say x t, so I put x t in place of even, so this becomes the first order systems mathematical equations take Laplace transformations and then if you take inverse Laplace transformations, we will get the output corresponding to this input. So, let us consider I am giving an unit step input to my instrument. So, my instrument a first order instrument you can consider it to be a thermometer at t equal to 0 I give a step input of magnitude 1. So, I call it a unit step input. So, the input to the instrument up to this was let us say 0 and at time t equal to 0 this is my start of the experiment. So, at time t equal to 0 I suddenly make the input as 1 and keep it there. So, this is the step input. So, this can be represented as x t equal to 1 for all time t greater than 0. You can also write x t equal to 0 for all time t less than 0, but this becomes sufficient. So, x t equal to 1 for all time t greater than 0. We have seen that Laplace transformation of this is 1 by s. 
So, put 1 by s in place of x s, I have done it and then if I take inverse of this, I get this. which is the output of the instrument for unit step input. Remember B 0 by A 0 represents static sensitivity and A 1 by A 0 represents time constant. So, this equation becomes this y t equal to k into 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau. So, this equation represents the output of an instrument for a step input. So, this is the output of a first order instrument for a step input. What kind of step input? Step input of magnitude 1. So, if I give a step input of magnitude a, this will be multiplied by the magnitude of the step input. So, y t equal to k into a is 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau represents the output of a first order instrument when I give a step input of magnitude a to this input. So, given a step input of magnitude a to the instrument, this equation represents the output of the instrument. So, how the output of the instrument changes with time can be obtained from these equations. So, if you know the time constant of an instrument, if you know the sensitivity, you will be able to find out the response of the instrument from this given equation. Once again, this is the response of a first order instrument for unit step input. Now, if I make a plot of y versus k, so y versus k and against versus t by tau. So, I am plotting y t by k for t by tau. Note that if I am given a unit step input, this is the response. What will be the ultimate or the final response? that can be obtained for very large t. So, let us put t equal to infinity. So, if I do that, these terms becomes 0. So, the final response becomes k for unit step input. So, y t by k becomes the dimensionless measure of the input. Similarly, t by tau is the dimensionless time because time tau is time constant. So, If I make a plot of y t by k versus t by tau, I will get a response like this for a unit step input. Note that the initial rate of rise was this. But this initial rate of rise is not maintained throughout. Mm. 
the output of the instrument increases and asymptotically matches with this value. Also, at t by tau equal to 1, that means at t equal to tau, the output that you get will be 63.2 percent of the final response. So, this is the characteristic of a first order instruments that at time t equal to tau, you will achieve the 63.2 percent of the final response. So, by plotting the output of a first order instrument, let us say thermometer, I have my thermometer was a steady at a particular temperature, then I suddenly give a step input to the thermometer or in or an input of any magnitude a I give to the instrument and then record the thermometer's reading. So, but looking at this 63.2 percent of the response final response, because I know what will be the final response, I will be able to measure or estimate the time constant. So, this method gives me a way to measure the time constant of any first order instrument by looking at its response. So, just look at the 63.2 percent of the final response and the corresponding time is the value of the time constant tau. So, this was the response of a positive step input. So, my say thermometer was at 20 degree Celsius, I have suddenly put it to boiling water which is 100 degree Celsius. So, this is a positive step input of magnitude 100 minus 20 equal to 80. I can also bring back the thermometer from 100 degree Celsius boiling water to 20 degree Celsius temperature. So, in that case it will be a negative step input of the same magnitude because 20 minus 100 is minus 80. So, in that case the response will be this. So, this is the falling step input response for for response for falling step input or negative step input and this is the response for the positive step input or rising step input. The characteristics will be same at time constant tau you will achieve the 63.2 percent of the final response and you can also find out the final response from here. So, now we will take a physical example of a first order system. So, let us consider a mercury thermometer. T is missing here. A mercury thermometer is a first order system of mercury thermometer is a first order instrument. What we wish to do now is we will write down or we will develop the mathematical equation for the mercury thermometer and we will see that we obtain a first order ordinary differential equation. So, mercury thermometer is a temperature measuring instrument. So, for obviously, to develop the mathematical model for the thermometer, we have to write energy balance equation. So, let us write conservation of energy during any time t for 
this thermometer. So, we have this thermometer ordinary mercury in glass thermometer put into a beaker. Let us say there is water or some fluid in the beaker whose temperature is represented by T i which is a function of time. So, thermometer bulb receives this thermal energy. So, let us say there is mercury inside it undergoes restricted thermal expansion. So, it goes up mercury goes up through this capillary and from the scale attached to the or graduated on the thermometer you will be able to find out the temperature. So, let us say the temperature of the fluid is T i and the temperature of the thermometer or the thermometer bulb is T T f. So, now the energy balance equation is heat in to the thermometer minus heat out from the thermometer equal to change in energy content of the thermometer. So, let us look at the bulb of the thermometer because that is where this energy exchange is taking place. So, heat in to the mercury bulb, heat out from the bulb and change in energy content of the bulb of the thermometer. Let us make certain assumption that there is no heat loss. Let us also assume that the physical properties of the thermometer fluid or mercury does not change with time. So, density of the mercury does not change with time, specific heat capacity does not change with time so on and so forth all physical properties remain constant. Then there is one important assumption which we make is as follows that all the capacity to store thermal energy resides in the bulb and all the resistance to flow this thermal energy also resides here. So, I am doing lumping of capacitance and resistance. So, this is known as lumping of parameter. I do not consider that this capacitance and resistance varies in space. So, the capacitance or the capacity to store the entire thermal energy is located in one place in the bulb. The same thing about the resistance. So, the all the resistance to flow to this thermal energy resides in the bulb. So, this is known as lumping of the parameters. It leads to lumped parameter models. If I consider that there is variations of capacitance and resistance in space, then we will not get an ordinary differential equation, but we will get a partial differential equation. So, our mathematical model will be more complex, but this lumping of this parameter is a reasonably good approximation here. Now, let us use these notations x 0 equal to displacement from the reference mark. Let us say you have a reference mark 0 here, right. So, this becomes x 0. K E x is the differential expansion coefficient of the thermometer fluid. V b is the volume of bulb. A c is the cross sectional area of the capillary tube T T f is the temperature of the fluid in the bulb. We discussed it 
previously we consider it uniform throughout. Now, as I told you the bulb in the mercury receives thermal energy and undergoes restricted thermal expansion. Because of that a pressure is developed and the mercury moves up through this capillary. So, what moves up through this capillary that amount of volume comes from the expansion of the mercury due to change in temperature. So, I can write down a mass balance equation. So, the amount of mercury in the capillary initially it was below the mercury was at this reference level. Now, I have mercury for this x 0 length of capillary. So, the amount of mercury that is present there is x 0 into A c that volume A c represents cross sectional area of the capillary tube. So, A c multiplied by x 0 represents the volume of the mercury in this capillary. So, that will be equal to k E x into volume of the bulb into T T f. Why T T f? Basically, T T f minus 0. Initially, it was at 0, let us say it was not temperature showing 0 temperature. So, the change in temperature is T T f. So, the x 0 into A c has to be equated to volume expansion coefficient times volume times temperature change. Look at the unit here. So, x 0 into A c which is volume becomes K e x B v into T f or I can rearrange and write as x 0 equal to K e x into V v into T f by A c. We will make use of this equation later. Now, the heat input can be written as this, which represents heat transfer coefficient, area of heat transfer, this is area of the bulb and the temperature difference. Thermal energy goes from the liquid in the beaker to the bulb. So, liquid temperature is T i, bulb temperature is T T f. So, T i minus T T f represents the temperature difference. There is no heat loss, so there is no heat out. So, heat in minus heat out is represented by this term change in energy of thermometer comes from m c p d t that means, mass of the mercury into specific heat of the mercury into the temperature difference. So, rho into V v is the mass of the mercury rho is the density of the mercury, V v is the volume of the bulb. So, that is the volume of the mercury. So, rho V v is the mass of the mercury into specific heat into temperature difference. So, let us equate this with this that is what I am doing here and if I rearrange I get this. Look at here this is a first order differential equation which relates T f with T i. This is output and this is input. So, rho V V C U A B U A B these are all the system parameters. So, combinations of the systems parameters are those A 1, A 0, B 0 those kind of terms.
So, this is the equation we just derived. I can also write this equation in terms of d x 0 d t. So, this equation output is the temperature of the thermometer of the bulb, temperature of the bulb of the temperature indicated by the thermometer that is related to this input T i. Now, since this temperature of the bulb of the temperature indicated by the thermometer is also related to the x 0, which is the mercury level in the capillary and they are related by this equation, I can also replace T f making use of this equation and can write this equation. So, again this is also a first order ordinary differential equation which can be rearranged as this and finally, as this. So, if you look at these equations, these entire thing becomes the time constant tau and these entire thing becomes the static sensitivity k. So, this is the equation we just obtained. This I told you that this is tau time constant and this is the static sensitivity k. Now, these are two important design parameters. You want the mercury thermometer to have low time constant, because if the instrument's time constant is low, the speed of response will be high. Imagine that at one time constant, you will get 63.2 percent of the final response. So, smaller the time constant value, faster is the response. Larger is the time constant value, slower or sluggish is the response. So, you want my thermometer to have a low time constant. Now, I know which combinations, I know the combination of the parameters that gives me time constant tau. So, I can appropriately tune those parameters to design a thermometer to have low time constant. Look at how. Time constant is rho C V V by U A V. So, we can reduce tau by reducing the terms that are appearing in the numerator that is rho C and V V, rho is the density of the mercury, C is the specific heat of the mercury and V V is the volume of the bulb. We can also increase U and A V to reduce time constant. Now, rho and C mercury density and heat capacity are the properties of the mercury. So, they cannot be changed independently. Once you have choose the mercury once you have cho chosen mercury or any other thermometer fluid, the density and the specific heat is fixed. So, I cannot independently lower down this, I can independently choose this. So, I choose a thermometer fluid with small product rho c. So, the density times the heat capacity should be lower. I can also reduce V B that is the volume of the bulb. So, volume of the bulb when I reduce it will also reduce the area of the bulb. But you want to reduce the volume of the bulb and you want to increase the area of the bulb to decrease tau. So, you have to take a suitable V V by A V. Also, 
if you look at the sensitivity expression, if I reduce the volume of the bulb, the sensitivity will be decreased. So, if I want to in if I want to lower down the time constant, which will give me fast response by decreasing the volume of the bulb, this also decreases the sensitivity. So, if I want to reduce the time constant to obtain faster response by decreasing the bulb, that means I design a thermometer with small thermometer bulb that will give me the first response, but it will also decrease the sensitivity of the instrument. So, the increased speed of response is traded off for lower sensitivity. Consider this equation for the thermometer, you have taken the sensitivity k equal to 1 here, take the Laplace transformation, rearrange this, you will get the Laplace transform output versus input relationship, if you take inverse you will get this as output in time domain. Note that the form of the equation that you have got, this equation you got previously as well. So, this is the equation for thermometer response. If I give a step input of magnitude 1 or unit step input, my response is this. At t equal to infinity, it matches with this. If I give a step input of this, I am expecting the output finally to be this. My response goes like this, which asymptotically matches with this line at t equal to infinity. At one time constant value, I get 63.2 percent of this final response. So, for large time constant, you see the response will be slow, for small time constant the response will be fast. So, we will stop here.